Welcome to this week's episode of China Time. Toby, welcome. And how are you? <laughs> It's going well, Tepo. I've noticed you asked me how are you, <laughs> not how is you. <laughs> I'm getting there with my vocabulary. You see, you see, this white man, this black man, we're working on our English skills here too, you know. <laughs> Because in previous episodes, you always say how is you. But it's how are you? But it makes sense that it's my, maybe it's my signature. It's how no, I maybe ask. it's the kind of English we speak. Yes. I mean, if you a lot of these computer software programs, you know, if you have to register for something, it always asks you, what English do you want? British English, American yes, English, see, America, United Kingdom. I, I always see those kind. Yeah, maybe I, I think in South Africa, we must change the computers to black English and white Burki English. But once you start now pulling the black and white, you're studying another thing. Let's <laughs> let's talk about today. What what's happening? What what you've been doing? Where have you, have you been? Yeah, we've been all over. Um, I want to ask you a question quickly because one of the interesting conversations I had this week. Um, I want to put you on the spot. Here. I did not prepare you for this, but anyway, let's just see how it goes. A company phoned me. Um, it seems to be a. Uh, a A global company, so they're opening branches in South Africa now, and the leadership promised certain benefits. And it's not in the contract of employment, but it is confirmed on email and so forth. But now, they did not adhere or honor this agreement with the staff in terms of the benefits. Now the staff want to know, and this is the staff, the management, HR. Everybody is up in arms now because the company is not fulfilling their promises in terms of this benefit. How should they deal with this? But once you say it has been communicated, even though it's not in the contract and stuff, word of mouth is there. It's communicated. It's on paper. It's there because uh, it takes me actually back to I think it's Schedule H seven where it says before you determine whether you can dismiss a person or not. Was there a standard rule or something? Okay. So sometimes the rules are not in paper, but it's okay. a common rule. Do not steal. It's a, it's a common thing. Was it communicated every day of, of the of your life when you are a cashier? You know that you must give proper change to the customer, and then you know mm. you must, uh, like they say, fiduciary duty. You must act, act with goodwill towards your employer. Even the employer must act goodwill towards their mm. employee. Yeah. So now that the communication is there, it's been sent on email. You promise everyone. It's like this December, and you say, "Sapo, if we're going to close this December, we're going to take a trip to Durban." Oh. You see, I, I thought you were going to say you're going to get a bag. <laughs> <laughs> I was almost like, <laughs> "You're bribing me already." <laughs> we're going to take a trip to Durban. Then you put it on email, and our, <coughs> our other colleagues see that. Already in our minds, we make plans. You see now, mm. and then. Makes a plan to get babysitter to look after her kids. I make a plan to tell my partner that ah, ah, this December I'm going to Devon, work related. The magazine makes other plan. You see, it's there. It's communicated. You're right. There's a rule. There are, I suppose, rules in place. Yes. Um, it's confirmed. There's benefits. Are we talking about it's a, communicated? A yeah. potential unfair labor practice benefit dispute yet? But how will you actually advise them how to deal with this matter? Because remember, we're talking about the benefit here now in yes. terms of Section 186, Subsection 2, unfair labor practice benefit dispute. How do you actually deal with this? Because clearly, the employer is in the, supposedly in the wrong here. I think first of all, there need to be solidarity. Everyone must come together and put it in a sort of a petition or something. Write a letter to the employer. Say, but you're giving the right answer now. You're supposed to give the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> but you said you get to use the surprise and it. Yeah, I, I, you know. The point I'm trying to make is a yes. lot of employ or employees when there's a dispute, now, yes. they want to run to the CCMA. They first want to sue the employer. No, no, no. And I had to tell this HR manager. But listen, the employee-ment relationship it's a sensitive and a fragile one. Your first recourse always is speak to your employer, do the petition, yes. do a grievance. Don't just run off to the CCMA because you can. Uh, we're not saying that you must avoid the CCMA at all cost. It is just speaking to your employer is obviously very important. 
by so saying, you see now, it, it makes sense also. It's like after being dismissed and you find that the company has got an appeal policy. Yeah. So instead of you running to the CCMA and say, yeah, but I was unfairly dismissed, maybe you must apply your mind mm. on getting an appeal and review your own case and see how ap what yeah. approach you can bring. You see, before running to this, because maybe after the appeal, you can be reinstated or mm -hmm. you can talk something different. And maybe they can see that you're showing remorse in your, yeah. in your, in your, in your appeal case. But yeah, sorry to disturb no, That's you, very just, true, yeah. but you know, I just have some general advice to employees. You know, this employment relationship is very fragile, it's very insensitive, you know. You have a right to go to the CCMA, but you know, you don't always have to exercise that right. You know, labor relations is first and foremost a relationship. Try to remedy that relationship and try to protect that relationship, you know. But once you do go to CCMA, I, I suppose, you know, the lines are drawn. Yeah. That doesn't mean you mustn't. There's a time and place for everything there. Eh? Okay. But yeah, it's important. But anyway, so this week, there's something I want to talk about, you know, something I've experienced over a long period of time, but also this last, I think, two, three weeks or so, it really um, uh, 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 came to the fore quite a lot. And that is, you know, tricks we have at conciliation. <laughs> I once, I've, I've labeled this term the dark side of labor law, but not really. But the tricks we use at conciliation also, why it is sometimes necessary, probably always necessary to object against Connor. I, I wonder, sorry, I wonder who are you advising now? Because I'm, it seems like now you are, you are exposing us to the other party. Remember there's two parties here, <laughs> employer and employee. So I wonder now... Are we being exposed because we, rep we represent most employers? And then now you're giving away our secret <coughs> to the employees. This is tips for the employer. Okay. And for their representatives. Okay. okay. Why is it important to object? Now, if you're a commissioner, please forgive. Maybe you must just, you know, exit, don't watch this because they <laughs> may get offended. You know, you know, commissioners always say, you know, we need to serve the interest of justice. Yeah, you may be the commissioner, not me. <laughs> That's just a joke. <laughs> no, sometimes the pressures we face, Chapel, is that you serve the interests of your master. And sometimes it's an employee, sometimes it's an employer. I had, uh, I think it was Christmas last year, December last year, I had dinner with my sister. And she asked me about my job and what I do. And then she told me I'm a monster. And I told her, yeah. Only until the time you need me. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. So anyway, the, the case today is about um, malicious applications to the CCMA. A lot of employees file malicious applications to the CCMA. Now, in terms of the law, strictly speaking, the reason why a person will maybe object against con op is if there's a real genuine uh, interest on parties to settle a dispute. But I suppose, you know, unintended consequences is that there are various tactics at play when people do object against CONOP. And I just want to touch base on four interesting cases that I've been dealing with in the last few weeks, you know, where it's actually quite important to actually object against CONOP. And the reason being primarily, Chepo, is because a lot of employees file malicious applications to the CCMA just to milk the employer. Because you can, it's most a free service, you remember. Yeah. CCMA and, is most free. And sometimes <clears throat> sometimes people get wrong advices. You know? Uh, people will say, yeah, but I can go to the CCMA and you're gonna pay me. Yeah. So that's the only thing that is running into his head. He forget mm -hmm. about all the steps, misconduct, conciliation, arbitration, and then there's cross questioning in there, the sweetnesses. You'll find someone walking in like this without any single paper, document, whatsoever, mm -hmm. going to the CCMA because in his head it's like, I'm going to win this and they're going to pay me my salary for six months yeah. whilst I'm sitting at home. So sometimes yeah. also it's a wrong advice that they're getting. Yeah. But just the fact, Apple, that you have the right to go to the CCMA doesn't mean you must. I always say there's nothing wrong with dismissal. There's not even something wrong with discrimination. Oh. <laughs> Discrimination is not necessarily wrong. Yeah, yeah, it's not as long as it's not it's not an unfair discrimination. Unfair discrimination yeah, is you wrong. You are right. 
We discriminate. We humans. We yeah. dis- I mean, the wife you married and not the other one. That's discrimination. But that's not necessarily unfair discrimination. Yeah. Eating KFC, not steers. It's discrimination. It's not necessarily unfair. Dismissals is a normal part of business life. Yeah. Unfair dismissals. It's a problem. It's a problem. Yeah. That is a problem. But now a lot of employees will file malicious disputes to the CCMA because they've got their own agenda and they're just trying to milk the employer. So I feel, Chepo, even though the CCMA, and I suppose for the interest of justice sake and the public interest and whatever, it's important to make the courts accessible. But I sometimes wonder, you know, if the CCMA can just charge an application fee, 100 rand, 200 rand, something like that, you know, just to sift through all the malicious applications that will also save time to the commissioners who are already overextended. But also, you know, it will boost the coffers of the CCMA a bit, you know. Because at the end of the day, whether you're not an employee, or whether you're an employer, or a representative, and we all have our own feelings about commissioners when we lose cases. But if we can just park that, at the end of the day, the CCMA is doing a good job. It is. Actually, when you talk about surfing the, 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 the malicious applications, you know, ever since last year, December, we are heading towards another December. I've been going to the labor court doing mm-hmm. a follow up with the case. The filing system there, it's a mess. Yeah. It's a mess. Like walking in there, they will, you give them a case number, they say, go to that room. You just go there to check the filing there. It's a mess. I think they even uh, advertised there for people to come and volunteer yeah. in helping them. <coughs> because now it's just stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks. But, yeah. but just from our side, my side, a vote of confidence to the CCMA. Um, I think they're doing a great job. And if you look at all so many institutions of Africa, you know, and let's not call names now. The CCMA, in my view, it's working. Hundred. The process is working. Administration is working. Yes, you get your instances where they don't have the condemnation application or the objection to con up, whatever the case may be. But in principle, I think the CCMA is doing a good job. I think the commissions are doing a good job. They're working under enormous amount of pressure. And I think an application fee will be a good thing. It'll boost the coffers, you know, get some assistance. But anyway, so <coughs> yesterday. An HR manager phoned me. This person was at the CCMA in Pretoria and um, they were busy with arbitration. One of the employees, a uh, high level professional employee, she, he resigned and filed a constructive dismissal dispute. I did not represent the employer in this case, but I did consult on frequent occasions to the HR manager on this matter. And um, so after the case yesterday, I was contacted and we discussed and just very interesting. Yes, um, interesting is during the initial phase, as you know, in arbitration, you know, you always go to conciliation first. Okay. And this employee resigned because he did not under, well, or he say he did not know the certain way certain benefits in the company will work. And once the employer implemented this ben- these benefits, he felt it was a material change to his terms and conditions of employment, and he resigned and filed a constructive dismissal case. Now, interesting is when they came to the CCMA, this employee had the audacity to say, listen, pay me 35,000 Rand, and this case is gone, and we'll settle right here. But interesting is, in the meantime, the HR manager, they found the recording of his initial job interview where the policies and the benefits was clearly explained to him how it will function. And he said he understood. And he understood. And there was no deviation in terms of the way the employer actually implemented the policy. That's the one thing. The second thing is, and this is beautiful. And here it comes to the dark arts again. You guys must not listen, man. <laughs> I must actually have my cricket ball. You see a lawsuit. Now, on the one hand, it's about the law. On the other hand, it's a game you play. So I always, when I train managers yes. or companies on IR, I've got a cricket ball. So I always throw this ball up and down while I'm teaching, you see. And then the people will ask me, Why, what's on with this ball? So then I'll just throw the ball to them and say, catch. Sometimes they catch, sometimes they don't. And this is the thing about the CCMA case. That is the beauty of conciliation. It's a game of chess. It's a game. 
it's a bit of an art of manipulation and strong arming the other party you see so what the employer found out is that he got another job which he got before he resigned so because this is a constructive dismissal and you need to try to understand the real frame of mind at the time this employee resigned why did this person resign was it because the employment conditions was really intolerable or not or was it for some other reason the employer told this person listen we have the recording we admitted this and was explained and secondly we are going to sit for arbitration we will subpoena your new employer to come and testify here that they offered you the job before you even resigned so you know you see the employee is the one who came with tricks this time because he thought I can quickly get milk 35,000 and run because I have another job which I'm stable. Yeah, but the thing is a lot of employers don't always think about this. Hey, this employee that's challenging you to CCMA, have you ever considered subpoena his new employer? <laughs> you know what the employee did? He was through the case. <laughs> because he doesn't want to step on, on, on the new He doesn't want the new employer to come and sit yeah. there. You see, so sometimes you know your staff taking you to the CCMA, they've got a job at another company. Find the reason why you must subpoena that guy and tell the employee in conciliation. Hey, you will see now the flames here. <laughs> like this. So this whole mindset of I'm going to multi employer for money is suddenly out of the door. Five minutes to withdraw the case, no yeah. problem. <laughs> yeah, no, employees, employees, but they are also clever. Ah, they're too clever, eh? They are also clever. Very clever. Because now you see, if the employee, employer, did not think of those things. Maybe you could have just said, you know what, let me just give him 35,000, then we part ways, we're not going, longer gonna see each other. Because some people, they just wanna quickly resolve the matter, it's gonna waste my time. I'm gonna be here, how many times now? Three times, postponement, this and this. Yeah. So let me just settle and go. But you know what, this HR manager, at first, you know, employee said he wants 35,000, and so she went out and phoned the boss and said, listen, he wants 35,000, and obviously the boss- Mandate. You know, the boss told her what the typical boss do. Look, let's just leave the theatrics. He's not going to pay him a cent. So after he withdrew the case, she phoned him back again and said, Sir, now he wants 100,000 rand. The man apparently almost fainted. But then she was just like, no. <laughs> just relax, he withdrew the case. <laughs> anyway, the second case, I did mention this case before in a child time. Um, the element of prejudices and a lot of employees don't understand this conciliation is without prejudice okay but arbitration is with prejudice that and this is where it comes back to the fact that you have the right to go to the ccma you must be careful there are consequences yeah. it doesn't mean you must go to the ccma you must really think carefully here because at the end of the day in arbitration whatever you said it will be reflected in that arbitration award and this is the thing whether you win the case or lose the case it becomes public record look at linkedin for instance hey people are sharing cases there left right and center there we know what jan is doing and what this company is doing we people like us we study those cases the case laws the arbitration awards Verification agencies, HR managers, you know, they phone to do checks, you know, credit checks, they phone old employers, you know. And you know what? Old employers will just email the arbitration awards, even if you won. But, you know, you may win on a technicality, like for instance, maybe the employer was not sound in the procedure. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, you still stole a million bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really want an employer to see that? No. And so that's why conciliation <clears throat> is beautiful. And I found that especially with white collar workers, um, professional people, managerial staff, you know, who has a bit of a reputation to protect, you explain to them, listen, this is a with prejudice process arbitration. These are the facts we have on you. It's going to be an arbitration award. Are you sure you want to go for this? And you know what? I've actually found a lot of times people actually withdraw the case. And this one case, this manager was trading in 300,000 rand illicit gold. And he was a manager. And at conciliation, I explained to him, listen, we have objected against Connor. Just know this. In arbitration, this is what I'm going to say. And any future, I looked him in the eyes and I said, in a future employer phoning us, we will tell him and we will send him the arbitration award. Whether you win the case or lose the case, for me, that means nothing. He also withdrew the case. Mm. 
And this is also why I say sometimes, you know, this is a bit of a pinch to the companies with a good corporate culture. You have a great culture, but when it comes to the CCMA, it's a dogfight. There's no culture at the CCMA. <laughs> <laughs> you remind me, I did, I did a case about a few days ago, if not a week ago, and now the employee started to try and manipulate the employer with emotions. Yeah, but you know, I'm like, eh, hey, sorry, this is not your romantic moment. This is for me to get facts. I don't want your emotion stuff. I want facts <laughs> here. I only want, as a chairperson, I'm listening to facts. You said you are not guilty. You said he's guilty. That's what I want to know. Why are you saying he's guilty? Why are you saying you are not guilty? Facts. Stop this bromance thing. Mm. Please. Yeah, and another case. Um, interesting is this young girl. What do they call them? Millennials. Millennials. What? My 2000s. My 2000s. <laughs> young, young girl, young girl. You know... She was quite rude and insubordinate and dishonest towards her employer. And I actually saw a video of where we had just a normal discussion with her. And she whipped the gut and then she walked out and <laughs> slammed, slammed the door. Slammed the door closed. And I'm like, yes, you know. Anyway, I chaired the hearing. I dismissed her. And I remember you attended to the CCMA. Now she also went to the CCMA thinking, hey, there's money coming my way. You know, people's got this thing that the CCMA is a money cow. Huh? I told you. I'm telling you, but anyway, my 2000. Eh? So, went to the CCMA, obviously we objected against Connor. There's something called the black swan. Now, the black swan eh, is something that you don't know that you don't know. Sometimes when you go to the CCMA, and this is in every aspect of life, it's true in every aspect of life, but also at the CCMA, you pitch up the, you can't be asleep. You must take the, the slapies at your workies at now, and you must be awake. Okay, because that ball, people are throwing balls at the CCMA, and you must, you must wakker wees, verstaan jy. In this case also, and you did a brilliant job there, I think it's because of your beard, I think the young, young girls are scared of you. <laughs> hey, now I'm discriminating against that. Huh? Anyway, so, this girl explained this and that, but in conciliation, this girl slipped out as she got a job in Dubai. Yeah. So clearly... You know, if you're awake, she's not going to go for arbitration. You know, she's just there for the money. Mm. Okay? And she proudly said it. <laughs> you know what? I've got a job in Dubai. I've got a job. I have to go to Dubai. I'm like, okay, so you want us to pay you for work that you didn't do? Yeah, I, was, I only got paid half a month. I'm like, when were you dismissed? And she said, I think on the 14th or the 13th. Yeah, but I was supposed to get the whole month salary. I'm like... So you just want to get money for free. Commissioner, I'm not cross-questioning, but we are conciliating here. Yeah. But can you pay her for free? Commissioner said, no. There's no way. <laughs> but you see, the thing here is, objecting to up was a beautiful thing because the black swan year was the fact that she got a job in Dubai. And in circumstances like that, you do not settle. We have not heard from her again. She's not going to apply for arbitration because she's on the plane to Dubai. <laughs> Hucks. <laughs> but Chepo... <laughs> The most beautiful case. Yeah, see, this is interesting. Some time back, I think it was like a month or two, I spoke about this case where this employee was dismissed for incapacity. And this employee had been paying her for the whole year. A provident fund, a disability cover, paid out and back paid her for the same year. So she actually got like double dipping money twice. During this time, while being off, not working, she got a salary increase like all other staff. She even got a December bonus like everyone else. Went to the CCMA. We actually settled on two months' salary. And the reason being is because of a technicality. In terms of a contract employment, she was supposed to get two months' notice pay. Something the company didn't follow. So we knew technically, I suppose, we were supposed to pay that money. So we basically settled on what we owed her. Vrachtag. This person applied for a Section 186, Subsection 2, Unfair Labor Practice Dispute in terms of benefits. But this time, the case is about the Provident Fund apparently not following the rehabilitation policy in terms of that policy. But now she's making as if this is our problem, which is not. It's got nothing to do with the employer. It's not the employer's policy. 
So if there is a suit, it must be a civil suit against the insurer. Against the insurance company. But what she doesn't know is in the meantime, we got the evidence that they did adhere to the rehabilitation Ooh. policy. So she actually is trying to cause shit here now and actually talk and, and, and being plainly dishonest in the application. So in this case, we also objected against CONOP, but for conciliation, we actually didn't pitch at all. Because the day before, and this is interesting, we objected against CONOP, the day before conciliation, she also objected against CONOP. But it's interesting, in the previous dismissal case, she also objected against CONOP there, out of her own. And in the email the day before conciliation, she sent the email saying, oh, hopefully we can settle this dispute like we did last time. Oh, so now... She's clearly malicious. She doesn't have a, a foot to stand on. And she's just hoping for money. You know, so we didn't even pitch it. Maybe she must become a farmer because she likes milking. Hey. <laughs> so she didn't apply for arbitration yet. She's still in the 90-day period. So we've got a bet on now, you know, between us. Will she apply for arbitration? Yes or no? Some feel she will. Some feel she, she won't, you know. But, yeah, that's why, you know, it's, sometimes, it's, it's important sometimes, you know. And I know commissioners, for them it's about the interest of justice. Yeah. And, and they, the wasting of their time and resources. But for us sitting that side, you know, see, it's a game, mate. It's manipulation. It's art. It's, it's, it's a fight. There's no culture there. Yeah. It's a dog fight, you know. Because a lot of employees are filing malicious disputes, you know. And commissioners do enjoy when you conciliate, not go for arbitration. Because, you know, they have like 36,000 cases in a period, in a certain period that they have to deal with. So when you go conciliation and you resolve, you will see how they run with that Settlement agreement. Oh, yeah, they love it. Yeah. <laughs> you see. But that is for me from this side for this week, Tsepo. So at the end of the day, there's reason behind objecting to CONOP. A lot of malicious applications there. I wish that sometimes a CC can just uh, charge a small application fee. fee or something, you know. But you don't mess with South Africans with their free stuff, ne? Remember, South Africans, they enjoy free stuff. Once you start, you say, but now we're going to start charging. They're going to look at you and say, ha, ah, not here in South Africa. What are you doing? But anyway, the moral of the story, I think, here is know when to go to the CCMA. Uh, get proper advice. That's why we are here. That's why we are here. Get proper advice from people who've got experience and then who got knowledge into this thing. We're not saying do not go to the CCMA, but get proper advice first. Mm -hmm. And then take it from there. Just lastly, from my side, for all the Harmony People Network members, in November, just before the end of the year, I'll be making a tour to Cape Town and the KwaZulu Natal. And I will be offering a labor law workshop for two days. Very popular. I do a lot of training at companies. Like, for instance, this year I've trained Nike South Africa, Meteor South Africa, Alvin Cables. Also, at some point, at the Time Bank. Been training for 15 years. I'm going to do the courses in Natal, Gauteng and KZN and I mostly offer it for free. There will be a normal nominal fee for your breakfast or whatever the case may be. But yeah, it is a free support initiative for the Harmony People Network members only, which is a very fast growing uh, community of HR and related practitioners in South Africa. So yeah, Chepo, thank you for this week. I'll see you next week again. Thank you very much. Don't like forget to like eh? and subscribe. Yeah, there's a button somewhere you must click yes or something. Thank you. Have a nice one. Bye-bye.